So we just arrived at Elephant Butte Lake State Park and Louie found a huge litter box. <laughs> so, and it is $8 for dispersed camping on the beach. So as soon as Louie gets done doing his business, we'll go check out the lake. There's us. The sand is pretty soft and loose, so we opted for the gravel instead. Because I'm a chicken shit and I'm not getting stuck in the sand. Isn't that right, John? <laughs> this is what we need 4x4. Four four. <sighs> it's a beautiful day, though. It's like 72 degrees. <laughs> I bet that water is cold as F. Pretty though, huh? To change, I was way too hot. I was wearing jeans and a dark shirt. Mm -mm. Here's us at a level spot, <laughs> kind of out here in the middle of nowhere, but whatever. But we're gonna take our chairs down to the lake, put our feet in the water at least. Oh, and we also had lunch. We had some tacos um, at this place here called Casa Taco. It was good. It was a little pricey, you know, but eh, YOLO. Good morning. Slept really well last night. It was pretty quiet here. So John and I are trying to figure out if there's a way we can beach camp on the opposite side of the lake. There seems to be one camper over there and that's it. So, you know, we want to crash the party. <laughs> It almost looks like we're camped on top of a sand dune. <laughs> yeah, this was fun to walk up. <sighs> so, can you see why I didn't want to come down all the way to the shore? <laughs> John is obsessed with trying to figure out how to put that tent back together so we can take it with them. I mean, it, someone left a brand new tent. Tag still on it and everything on the beach. So when we went down there, <clears throat> they also had a brand new like, tarp that we laid on. So I'm gonna take that with me. <sighs> because why not? Because you know, I have room for it. Pfft, not. But, yeah, I don't understand. But I've seen people do that a lot, you know. They'll buy a brand new grill, still in the box, bring it to an event for a weekend, and then just trash it when they're done. Like, really? Oh, people. So John and I talked to a ranger and we are now on the other side of the lake where it's quieter and so we're gonna 
camp here for a few days. And I think that there's a pay station right here. Yeah. So that's what we're going to do. So, yeah. Got my stickers. We just paid for two nights. 16 bucks. Oh my gosh, it's so quiet out here. Heck yeah. Also, real quick, the checkout time here is 2 p.m. Can you believe that? That's the latest checkout I've ever seen anywhere. It's crazy. Normally it's 11 or 12. Nope, two here. Sweet. A little bit of washboard, that's okay. Well, it's very, very sandy, like loose sand. It's not hard packed and it's not very level. So we're not sure if we're going to stay here, if we're going to go back to where we were. We'll see. We haven't decided yet. I'm just really scared of getting stuck in the sand. I've already seen a car get stuck in the sand. <laughs> so... Yeah, but it's a beautiful area. I love these things, don't you? Um, I don't know, have I never noticed before, but it says Northwest Blend as opposed to... Anyway, um, so let me tell you something funny. <laughs> so. When John and I were trying to find another isolated spot next to the lake, we stopped next to the pay station and the dumpsters uh, to eat lunch before we go on and try to figure out where to go. And a white pickup comes by and drops off his trash into the dumpsters. And so John struck up a conversation with him and was like, hey, do you, do you know of where we can find a better spot level and da da da. And he's like, yeah, I live right down the road. If you, you know, go here and go there and go there, there's a, you know, some nice spots down there. And we're like, oh, okay, cool. Thanks. So we finish our lunch and we go on down the road to try to find this other isolated spot down there, which is right down the road from where the dude lives. And it's like a really small community. And I'm sitting here going, what <laughs> so that same day the first day we get there this other truck comes and parks right next to us i mean there's all this room to park and he parks right next to us and i'm going mm -hmm, okay this is this is how horror films get started a local sees two travelers and he sends them down the road to this nice secluded area that's awesome and then he himself or he tells his psycho buddy that there are these two travelers down here and then they get murdered that's how horror films start and I told John this and he's like oh yeah I guess you're right I didn't even think of that <laughs> so when that truck pulled up next to me I'm like What's he doing? Where's he going? I'm like, John, can you see him? He's like, no, he just went, took his fishing pole down there. And I'm like, mm-hmm. So he didn't leave until like 8.30 that night. So I was, you know, I was on high alert. If I had been there by myself, I don't know. I don't know if I would have stayed, to be honest. Um, But it just reminded me that I am huge into true crime i know sh big shocker right middle-aged white woman into true crime <laughs> but um so yeah in 1999 there was a serial killer that they coined his name as the toy box killer and he and his girlfriend had this like i think it was a um a storage container where they put all this torture equipment and they would kidnap women and torture them and kill them in this toy box, which 
was in Elephant Butte, the town. And so I'm like, what? And so I go online to like see what's going on to refresh my memory of the case. Well, the dude, the serial killer, the guy, he died um, before he was even able to go to prison. And then um, his girlfriend at the time, um, she was actually released from prison like two years ago. So, and they don't know where she is. They, uh, part of her parole was they didn't, she didn't have to check in so she could just go wherever. It's some sort of a New, New Mexico thing. But I'm going, yeah. Definitely would not have stayed here if I was by myself. So. <laughs> These little bastards are everywhere. So yeah, yesterday we had 40 mile an hour wind gusts. So basically stayed inside all day, got some stuff done. So the water is very murky today. Okay. It's a Christmas tree. Or it was. and quiet. Look at what I found. Seriously, what is the point of this plant? To just be annoying? Congratulations, you're doing it. There are tons of them around here. I've had to pull some out of Louie's fur already. Dare I? Oh. Ah, that's kind of nice, actually. This thing is pretty huge. I mean, here's my foot for comparison. Wow. It's a pretty nice spot, though. It's a little tricky getting level. But I got there. Okay, I'm like halfway tempted to take this piece of driftwood with me. I just propped it up against that tree so you could see how big it is. Look at that. Isn't that gorgeous? Of course, it won't fit in my van. It might fit in my dashboard. I don't know. <laughs> so, if you're curious... um. We started out over here um, near Rattlesnake, or yeah, Rattlesnake Island in Lions Beach. And then we went into town, did some stuff, and now we're over here near Lost Canyon and Cedar Canyon. So it's a pretty big lake with lots of little spots. So anyway... Yeah, I was just out here trying to take some pictures of the birds. And of course, instead I find things that I want to use my macro lens for. <laughs> That's always the case. That's why you always see photographers with two cameras and two different lenses. Never fails. Or at least my wide angle lens so I could get some landscape stuff. Anyway, I think we're leaving tomorrow. Don't know where we're going next. We'll see. That's part of the adventure.